The Orobanchaceae. This is a family in the order Lamiales and is commonly known as the broomrake family. It consists of about 100 genera with over 2,000 species and has a nearly global distribution, as you can see here. So there are some ornamentals in this family, but uh, more importantly, they are hemi and hollow parasites. So hemi parasites are partially parasitic and hollow parasites are fully parasitic. Here is a member of the Orobane casea growing off of a carrot root. So if you look, you can see the roots here of the Orobane casea member are attached to this nice swollen tap root of the carrot. Because of their parasitism, members of the Orobane casea can be absolutely destructive to crops. So in the image here, we see a carrot field which has been completely destroyed by Orobanchi crenata. This here is a member of the genus Castilea, which are commonly known as the paintbrushes. And I'm sure many of you guys have seen this plant around before. It is quite a common feature of the Colorado landscape. And in fact, uh, one member of this genus is the state flower of Wyoming. So generally, the Orobanchaceae are annual and perennial herbs, though we do sometimes see shrubs. But the big thing here is that they are either hollow parasites or hemiparasites. The hollow parasitic members of the Orobanchaceae lack chlorophyll entirely, as you can see in the image on the left here. And that is because they get 100% of their nutrients from their host plant. In contrast, the hemiparasitic members of Orobanchaceae do retain some chlorophyll, such as seen in the uh, image on the right here, and that is because they still perform photosynthesis as they are only partially parasitic on their host plant. Interestingly enough, members of the genus Artemisia within the Asteraceae are actually very common host plants for the parasitic members of the Orobanchaceae, at least within Colorado. So let's just kind of look at the life cycle of a member of the Orobanchaceae here. So we have Orobanchi minor, it looks like, and it has uh, reached reproductive maturity and produced seed. So these seeds here can actually remain in the soil dormant for many years until they come in contact with a hormone called strigotactone, which is released from a host plant. So when these dormant seeds come in contact with this hormone, it tells these seeds to produce uh, this root-like structure called Hastoria. And these Hastoria attach the seed to the root of the host plant in order to start leaching nutrients from the host plant. And then once this seed has attached to the host plant, it will remain underground for um, you know, up to several weeks in order just to, uh, I don't know, gain nutrients, mature a little bit. And when it's ready, it will shoot up its flower stalk and um, lay more seed again. And the whole process repeats itself. Here we have a member of the genus Orobanchi, and we can see the root-like Hastoria here, which it uses to attach itself to a host plant and then leach nutrients from it. This here is just a really cool close-up image of root-like Hastoria taken with a scanning electron microscope. So this is extremely close up. But here we can see this root-like Hastoria here um, attaching one plant to another. Just one more example of the parasitism in this group being a nuisance to crops. So here we have corn and all the flowers mixed in here are members of the genus Striga. And as you can see on the image on the right, they are parasitizing off of the roots of the corn here. So definitely a nuisance. Leaf arrangement in the Orobane Caseae is generally alternate and the leaves themselves are usually simple. So in the hollow parasites though, the leaves are often scale-like. And this makes sense because the hollow parasites are fully parasitic so the leaves themselves don't really perform photosynthesis anymore. So because they've lost this you know, photosynthetic function, being reduced to scales kind of makes sense. 
Um, the leaves are generally entire or pinnately dissected, and they are also ex stipulate, so without stipules. Flowers in the Orobanchaceae are perfect, zygomorphic, and often have a tubular shape. So the floral formula shows that our calyx is composed of either two or four to five sepals, but we will see a syncepalous calyx. Our corolla is zygomorphic and sympetalous, composed of five petals. We have four stamens in the andresium, and those stamens are epipetalous. Looking at the gynesium, it is syncarpous with two carpels and has a superior ovary. And for the gynesium, it has parietal placentation, often with numerous ovules. So in this slide, we're going to return to the genus Castilea for the paintbrushes. And the big thing to point out here is that the bright showy parts of this plant um, are not actually the flowers, but are colorful bracts. And the, the flowers are actually hidden within the bracts, essentially. Um, and the flowers themselves are pretty inconspicuous with green sepals and green petals. And then if we look at the fruit for members of the Orobanchaceae, we usually see loculocytal or valvular capsules. All right, so to review some recognition characters, the biggest thing for this family is definitely the holoparasites and hemiparasites. This can be tough, though, because with the hemiparasites, they are difficult to identify because, well, they still have chlorophyll, whereas the holoparasites are generally quite easy to identify because, well, they lack chlorophyll entirely. The flowers are zygomorphic and often tubular, so that's a good recognition character. Leaves usually alternate, and then the fruit is a loculocytal or valvular capsule. Orobanchi fasciculata is perhaps one of our most common holoparasitic members of the Orobanchaceae within Colorado. And you can tell it's a holoparasite immediately because, well, it doesn't seem to have any chlorophyll at all. Here's another holoparasitic member of the Orobanchaceae, Orobanchi multiflora. And multiflora here is a great specific epithet because this species has just numerous flowers. And um, just a little fun fact here, all members of the Orobanchi genus are holoparasites. So Agalinus tenuifolia, uh, kind of an uncommon plant, but is found in Larimer County here. And you can tell immediately that it is hemiparasitic and not holoparasitic, because what do we have? We have the presence of chlorophyll. So a really fascinating plant here, Pedicularis greenlandica, which is commonly known as elephant's head and is actually quite common in the subalpine and alpine here in Colorado. And I think it's just such a great common name because it does have these trunk-like appendages of the flowers just extending out. And it truly does look so much like the head of an elephant. So if you haven't seen this plant um, up close, in personal, just go take kind of a high elevation hike next summer, and you're bound to run across this guy, and it is just a treasure. For our last slide here, I just want to reiterate that in Castilea, the nice showy stuff here is not actually the flowers, but our colorful bracts, and the flowers are these less conspicuous green structures protruding from the bracts, the nice colorful bracts. So there you go. Don't be tricked by Castilea.